We're joined now by journalist and founder of the nonprofit organization American Congress for Truth. She's also the author of the new book, They Must Be Stopped, Why We Must Defeat Radical Islam and How We Can Do It. And She's Willie, Brigitte. Willie. Uh, exactly. It's en français. Ah, Brigitte. And how do you say? Gab Brigitte Gabriel. Mm, I told you. That was you. so much Brigitte better than Gabriel. you said earlier. Well, I'm sorry Brigitte about that. Brigitte Gabriel. Even though we don't like the French, we like the way it sounds. Oh. <laughs> J'adore. Okay, the Brigitte. French. Who Maybe? must who must be stopped and why? What are we talking about here? We're talking about radical Islamists right now who have basically are reversing the moderation that we have seen in Islam over the last few hundred years. We have seen the radicals right now go into Arabic societies, Islamic societies, all throughout the world, recruit from the young generation, revert back to the um, uh, radical version of Islam as it was practiced in the 7th century, and they are inflicting uh, terror on not only us in America, but all around the world. And how? Do you look into how? Uh, yeah, this? terrorism, bombing, um, you know, all the terror attacks that they are committing. They are now basically doing what the what Nazi Germany did, what Hitler did, by going after the youth and taking the youth and establishing madrasas all around the world mm -hmm. and brainwashing young children uh, into Islamofascism or Islamo-Nazism to be raised to hate Western culture, resent our ways, and it is presenting a problem. We already have seen the writing on the wall in Gaza and the Palestinian territories. Well, it's, it's, it's a point. Uh, Hamas was freely elected. Uh, Hezbollah was elected in southern Lebanon. The Muslim Brotherhood won 60% of the races it contested in Egypt. Correct. They are winning the support of the people through the ballot box. Uh, correct. And this is what happens when democracy is applied to cultures that are not really ready for democracy yet. So we are seeing this radical so Islamic group. Bush made group. a mistake when he had pushed for those elections. You have to prepare a society for democracy. You cannot give democracy to people who do not understand it, do not appreciate it, have not fought for it. You have got to prepare the society and teach them that freedom is precious, but you have to value it and fight for it. In other words, you don't hold elections there because they'll win them. Right now, the radicals are winning. Look at Hezbollah, a terrorist organization that's even training Al Qaeda, that's even more sophisticated than Al Qaeda, who has committed but terrorist but how attacks. Does Bush, do this? Bush has got his freedom agenda. He's calling for elections. Every time they hold an election, the radicals win. Uh, that is a problem. That is a problem that we have to face and we have ad to address. This is why we need to address the radical and how radicalism is spreading. Because democracy, look, Iran uh, had is, democracy prior to these, 79. Why are the people after 300 years of modern, modernizing, why are they reverting to, you know, back, back to the 15th, 16th century? Because you have the Muslim Brotherhood, which was founded uh, in 1928 in Egypt. It is the oldest radical Islamic organization in the world, founded by Al-Banna. Right. And it was basically as a response for Ataturk in Turkey, who ended the Islamic Khalifa. Right. Uh, Ataturk in Turkey said, enough of this radicalism. Women should have rights. Women should get an education. Women should go to school. So the radicals in Egypt started this little group that nobody paid attention to called the Muslim Brotherhood. And they started recruiting from society. But Turkey's going back in the same direction. Right. Exactly. Because now... The the radicals have the money, the Saudis, because of the oil wells, have been able to finance those radicals. We have seen since 79 the coming of Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran, the coming to power. And then we have seen, uh, as Iran uh, tilted into the radical direction, we started seeing also the Saudis coming into the, wealth, uh, the oil wells mm -hmm. and distributing that to institute that radical education of the authentic, pure Islam of the 7th century. And with their money, they were able to open madrasas around the world. They have madrasas in 21 capitals, world capitals, in the United States. We mm. have 225 registered Islamic madrasas in America. Mm. So this is a problem worldwide. But really. what, what can, forget the United States for a moment, change is going to have to come internally. How can the Muslim faith reverse this trend this, that's gone really in reverse over the last couple of hundred years. What do they do internally to change that? The moderates need to be stand up and be counted. They need to come together, form organizations, speak out publicly. Right now the moderates are sitting silently on the side and they are being complicit by their silence. They need to develop the courage to stand up and realize that this is not only affecting Western civilization, it is going to affect them as well. Look what happened with the Taliban in Afghanistan. The Afghanis were educated, women were 
working. They were doctors. They were lawyers. They neglected the Taliban, and they thought, well, the Taliban are not affecting us, even though they are radicals. Once the Taliban took power, within 24 hours, they instituted Sharia law, forbid movement to work. Look what's happening in Afghanistan right now. So the moderate Muslims who are now worldwide have a duty and a responsibility to stand up and be counted before it is too late. Brigitte mm. Gabrielle, thank well, you very much. Uh, again, the book is called They Must Be you. Stopped. Thank you very much for coming in and Thank talking you. to us. Pleasure being with you this morning.